Hi YouTube and welcome to Danielle's Denture Diaries. I am Danielle. I spent way too long messing with the light. As anyone who watches my videos know, I usually record at night after I put my child to bed and right now it's daylight. So I spent way too long messing with the lighting and finally I was like, you know what, I'm just going to glow and that's what we're doing today because where I'm at, it's finally sunny, it's finally starting to warm up, hopefully it's actually going to be springtime now and I was spring cleaning and I did a few other things with my dentures while I was cleaning and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and capture the moment and take some pictures. A recent comment that came up in my channel was um, what do my upper dentures look like and I was scrolling thought I would also share some other um, photos as well so what we're gonna be talking about is gonna be my dentures what they look like we're gonna talk a little bit about cushion grip in this video and we're also gonna be talking about life messes and making them happy messes. Um, when it comes to different things, not just denture related, the healing process is not pretty. Let's be completely transparent here. For anyone who has gone through it, you know what I'm talking about. For anyone anticipating it, I'm not saying this to make you fearful. I'm saying this because in all reality and in all preparation of it, be prepared for the fact that this is not a beautiful healing process. Your healing will turn out beautiful and your smile will be beautiful. You already are beautiful, so we already know that. But the fact of the matter is between the biofilm, the stitches, and the swelling, it's just all around not pretty. And sometimes that's just life, right? And I ran into a situation at work that pulled this to my forefront. Um, so I'm going to be very cheesy here for like two, maybe 20 minutes, and then we'll see what <laughs> happens because we know how I can talk. And what had happened is that I work in an office setting. I have a paper shredder. And let's be completely transparent here. I don't clean it out as often as I should. For anyone who's had or has a paper shredder, what happens when you go to clean it and you haven't cleaned it in, say, two months, a month and a half, maybe, something like that, maybe even three months? I honestly don't remember the last time I cleaned it. So if that gives you any perspective, that's where we are. Well, I went to clean it out recently and this is what happened. It ended up not only filling up this bag over here because I was trying to put the bag over it, dump it, it still kind of like floofed up and then it and then it just was everywhere and I was like okay well confetti it's a parade. Um, I forget what movie or who did I get that from? Actually, I'm pretty sure I got that from an Avenged Sevenfold video. Anyone that's a rock fan, listen to Avenged Sevenfold. If you do listen to Avenged Sevenfold, there's videos of the original drummer, Jimmy the Rev Sullivan. I totally recommend watching some of his funniest videos. He leaves me in tears, and he did pass away, I believe it was... 2012. Um, on December 18th, he passed away, so RIP, but amazing guy. Anyway, so made a huge mess, right? Well, as I was cleaning up this mess, I said that quote. I was like, confetti, it's a parade. And I thought to myself, I was like, I should use this. I should use this as confetti. Why not? So, Anyway, this is another fun video, um, or not video, um, picture. I accidentally dumped it again. I had put it in a cup. I went to grab a coffee cup off my desk and knocked it over. Yeah. Anyway, the point, though, is that when 
people come into my office now and something really fun, something really amazing, a milestone is hit. I now take a cup of confetti and I, on the bottom of it, and it goes everywhere and it usually surprises them because they didn't even know I had a cup of confetti or maybe they did know, but they didn't know what it was for and they didn't think I was going to use it, but I use it. <laughs> And it makes them smile, it makes them laugh, and they're like, oh no, you have to clean it. And I'm like, yeah, but it made you smile and it made you laugh. And that's what it's here for. So the fact that it started out as a mess, you can turn it into something beautiful. And you can turn it into something beautiful for even other people. And I guess in a way, as I'm talking right now, it doesn't just apply to the fact that messes can happen in your life. Dentures happened. The idea of dentures is happening. It's going to be beautiful, and it's going to be beautiful for not only yourself, but other people. When you smile, it's contagious. Other people just smile, and they're like, I don't know why I'm smiling. That person just walked by, and now I'm smiling, and I don't get it. <laughs> so at any rate, that's my cheesiness here. And then for me personally, the fact that I can take a healing journey, a step towards a healthier version of myself and a from the inside looking in <laughs> it was not a good thing to me for a long time that I was gonna have to have dentures this means that I'm not healthy this means that I was born without something it means that I'm lacking something it means I didn't do enough and all these other things and this is just me I'm not saying this is other people I'm not projecting on you but I can take this thing and I can grow from it and I've learned to love it and love myself and accept it and, and love my dentures. I love them now. And now I get to bring it here and from what I see in the comments, from what I'm reading and what you guys tell me, I'm actually brightening somebody's day and I'm poof in confetti for you. <laughs> um, even though I made a mess, of myself over here <laughs> I'm glad that it can be used to make you feel a little bit lighter and feel like I can carry this moment with you whatever you're going through in life whether it be the dentures not the dentures whatever it is I can carry this with you and I can sit here and talk to you and anyway see I told you I told you I said I was gonna talk for two minutes and I it's already almost 10 so that tells me what kind of a video this is gonna be this is gonna be a really long video guys <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is going to be um, the cushion grip let me move forward in my photos here because that happened a while back um, so we're gonna talk about cushion grip as you guys know if you've been following my videos I've been using cushion grip lately for my upper denture and when I first put cushion grip in I just have the cushion grip in because you're supposed to leave it in for a while so that it gets a really good mold of your upper gums or your gums in general I guess and then um, I still use the C bond wafers on my bottom and um, I go from there and then as I go forward, then I will use powder on my upper denture, but I don't need anything else. I don't need anything more. Sorry, I saw, thought I saw something move. And that's it. Now, on the instructions of cushion grip, I personally, personally, highly urge anyone to, that uses cushion grip, uses a variation of it, tries it, anything else, please adhere to the instructions. It states that you are to use the one soft reline each time you use it. it. It has a handful of applications in it, depending on the size of your dentures and how much you use at a time and everything else, um, determines how many uses you get out of it. But per each use or installation or application or whatever you want to call it, please only use it for those three to four days. Do not use it any longer than that. Discard it and reapply and redo it. I promise you on the one side, it is absolutely worth it to use cushion grip. Over those three or four days, there's so much less ill-fittingness and discomfort to have to deal with. And not to mention using the powder made my routine 
a lot more efficient and a lot easier. So there is that. I understand that doing the thing itself, applying, installing the cushion grip, it takes a little bit of time. You got to heat up the water, put the cushion grip in it, um, the tube, not, don't, please don't dump it in there. <laughs> put the cushion grip tube in there. It takes some time. It is what it is. Like anything else, it's a process, right? Don't use it any longer than those four days, though, please. And the reason I say that is because at the four-day period, and this is with me putting my dentures in a soak bath. This is me brushing my dentures. The soft reline, the adhesive, whatever you want to call it, still gets moisture, food, seasoning, salt, pepper, whatever, all these different things that are in your mouth, bacteria, go under that reline and stays there and is pocketed one way or another. If in a perfect world, no, nothing can get under there. We are human. We're not professional cushion grip, whatever you want to call it. Just assume that at some point there is a concern of hygiene and sanitation safety okay because we didn't get dentures to be not safe not healthy right so the picture I took was is from today as I was cleaning my house spring cleaning and all getting ready to move actually uh, uh, I was taking out the soft reline getting ready to put in a new one when I lifted it I'm sorry, terrible. I'm going to rest my wrist. Okay, there we go. You can see that there's some grime built up right there on the edge, on the very back of my denture. Grime, food, sorry, that sounded a lot more gross than it is. And it smelled. Did we really get dentures to have bad breath? Uh, um, bad breath still happens. I drink coffee. Don't get me wrong. That was gross. <laughs> it's going to happen. It is what it is. That's why I'm reapplying it and redoing it. Already redid it. That's what happens over time. I love cushion grip. And I'm still, I'm wearing it right now. Please follow the instructions, instructions and reapply it as needed. That's my rant. The next piece is talking about what do my dentures look like not here. In my face. So this is what they look like. I am going to find a good angle here. That's still bad. It's just so bright. Ah, there we go. I got to tilt it back, apparently. So that's what they look like. As you can see, there is the denture themselves, and then there is also a dentist-installed soft reline, the chair side. So this is with the cushion grip completely removed. I use cushion grip on top of my chair side soft reline um, because coming up here soon, my fangs are going to be sent out to the lab and they're going to be re hard. They're going to be hard lined, hard relined. Eh. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm using cushion grip right now because if it weren't for the cushion grip, they would be ill fitting. Um, this is what the teeth look like. <laughs> okay. They're beautiful. Beautiful pearly whites. And then that's the inside of my denture right now with that dentist chair line soft reline in it. Okay, so my actual denture it's wider set 
and it's thinner. The denture itself is thinner. Um, and that's to have the space and have the room for the healing process. These are, again, for anyone who hasn't been following me, maybe this is your first video watching from me. First of all, I'm sorry it's so long. I talk a lot. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Danielle. I talk a lot. Um, but this is to flex and allow healing. Um, flex is not a good word, but it has a space to allow healing and swelling. Um, which is why over time you will need soft relines, hard reline, eventually new dentures. Um, because again, sanitation, over time dentures can carry a lot of bacteria. And we all know that these are plastic and porcelain. And they are put together with the best of intention and with longevity in mind and everything else they're meant to be sturdy and durable the fact of the matter is that dentures get micro abrasions they get cracks they get little pokey holes in them from just natural over time wear and tear like anything else um and then i'm not sure why i took a picture of like the after as though you guys were not going to see me here on this video and in the thumbnail but I took a picture for you anyway um, so those are my dentures with and without soft reline the first picture was me pulling the soft reline back I didn't think to take a picture after the reline was completely out and then the cushion grip I guess or no no that was with that was without the cushion grip completely yeah I didn't take a picture with the cushion grip in it. So as of right now, that picture of the inside of my dentures, it's actually still too big and too bulky. And I got my soft reline, I want to say around Christmas. And um, even to this day, I can notice that as I'm wearing my cushion grip and I reapply it every three or four days, my gums are still shrinking more. Because over time I can actually rock my denture a bit um, as I bite and chew into things. Yes, I'm still practicing. Um, I can hear the air pockets popping and my denture pop and whatnot, which is really great for me to wear the powder because then it still keeps it mostly in place. Um, I guess the only other thing I would talk about now at this point is going to be where I'm at with the eating and updating you guys with that. At this point, I'm frustrated again. <laughs> I always tell myself I need to eat, I need to practice eating, and I need to eat, and it's time to eat, I need to practice eating, and I need to practice eating, and I need to practice chewing, and I need to practice eating. And I'm tired. I just want to eat and enjoy chocolate, and snack cakes and donuts and pasta. I don't want to practice eating right now. So once in a while, I don't 100% force myself to wear my dentures. If I'm comfortable enough, I'll wear them as long as I can and then I take them out and I stop practicing eating. If I'm over it and I had a day, I am taking out my bottom denture and I'm gonna eat and enjoy my food because I deserve it. <laughs> So I still can eat with them. It's still, it's okay. Um, the exposed bone seems to be either healing. Maybe it even came out and I didn't notice. Who knows? But at this point, practicing eating is simply not doing it for me. At this point, I just want to eat food. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know I covered a few different topics. I spoke a little longer on one than I thought. But again, we all know that I just, I enjoy talking to you guys. I enjoy telling you what's on my mind. I enjoy being transparent about the real deal behind having dentures. They're amazing. They're incredible. I still to this day would not take it back ever. I'm happy that I did it. It's allowed me to take pictures. It's allowed me to have this confidence that I have to post YouTube videos. I mean, that's as public speaking as I think I've ever gotten for the most part. 
Um, but anyway, if you like these kinds of videos, go ahead and hit the like button. If you have any other questions and things you want me to cover, leave a comment below. I'm going to go back and answer some comments right now once this video is done and posted. And if you would like to see more videos from me in the future, go ahead and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.